Look how good I am, Dad. I can change lanes. <laughs> Fine. Stop changing yeah. lanes. Why are you so bold up about the prospects for V14? All right. Our thinking on this has been independently verified. It doesn't mean that it's correct, but Altimeter Capital said that the improvement between version 12 and version 13 was a hundred X. By the way, is also what Elon was saying and what Tesla was saying like back in September of last year before it yeah, I'm not being smarter than Elon or Tesla yeah. here. I'm just- A little context setting. This is literally what Tesla said they were gonna do like this time last year, two orders of magnitude, which seemed crazy at the time. Yeah. They went and executed that. You're affirming that, Altimeter Capital is affirming that and then take it from there. In my personal experience, it was between two and three orders of magnitude better. So about 300 X improvement and how far it can go between safety critical interventions or disengagements where I am preventing an accident by intervening. I'm not talking about unsafe behavior. I'm talking about preventing an accident. Reigns1220 on Twitter. He's a rebellion our creator. Maybe Jordan, you could put his handle up there. He had a post last year where he talked about how this rate of improvement suggests that they're 2xing every month. So to 10x or to get one nine in the March of nines, it's between three and four months for Tesla to accomplish. So we're eight months after the release of version 13. Uh, so potentially there's a hundred X just right there. We also have a 10 Xing of the model size that the we don't know what that yeah. means as far as dropping nines or dropping bombs on FSD. And then just going off of what Elon's saying about version 14, what Elon is saying is that it's two to three times better than human. So I want to, let's just assume he's talking about as far as getting into accidents, because I think that's what matters the most. Where's the human baseline? Is that about one every 500,000 miles or yeah. so? Yeah. What Elon is saying is between a million and one and a half million miles per disengagement to prevent an accident. He thinks that's how often RoboTaxi would get in an accident. So that's a substantial improvement to version 13. Now, Elon's also said that version 14 is not going to improve all edge cases. One disengagement or one accident per million miles would show that it's not fixing every edge case. To be clear, he didn't say, oh, it doesn't work on edge cases or something like that, which yeah. is the way I think some people were interpreting it. But it was just like, hey, it's going to take some work for us to work through some of this. And yeah, um, it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> and it won't be perfect. <laughs> One accident every million miles is not perfect. What I'm seeing is a safety critical disengagement every 5,000 miles or so. There are some people in California and other places where they're going 15, 20,000 miles between safety critical disengagements, or maybe they've never seen one on version 13. That would suggest that version 14 is at least a 50X from what people in California are experiencing as people just driving around FSD version 13. And so you got a, a huge amount of pushback on this. <laughs> I think a lot of people anecdotally are saying, okay, listen, like I got to take over in my car somewhat frequently because it's yeah. going too slow or I don't want it to be rude or maybe there's a navigation issue. So I don't want to end up going the wrong direction, which is totally legitimate. But if you navigate the wrong way, while annoying, that doesn't actually result in any safety issues whatsoever. I think a lot of the engagements people are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis are annoying and not safety critical. It absolutely used to be the case for you and certainly for me that every single drive, there was a safety critical issue. <laughs> so the yeah, uh, almost like every second or third drive, like we have these, we have these exits off of the highway that it dumps you right onto a roundabout. And as you're getting off the exit, there is a concrete wall. You need to yield to the left in the United States. The car was approaching these at like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> it, there were times I had to jam on the brakes. I think this was version 11 and they 
mostly fixed that with version 12. But there were lots of hairy things where it would sit at a roundabout. It would wait for a number of cars and then it would decide to go at the wrong time. Yeah. That was a common occurrence for me. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I'm like, I would say traumatized, but that's too strong of a word. (laughs) There were all these instances where I'd be sitting just like turn left, wait, there's a gap coming. It's perfect. And the car would go five seconds before it would have been perfect to go. But that five seconds made it the wrong time to go. Like, slam on the brakes. I just look yeah. like an idiot about to turn into this car that's going the other direction at 55 miles an hour. And that used to be a very common occurrence for a lot of mm-hmm. us FSD beta testers. Now, like that just doesn't happen. There's a couple of times I think you and I have had experiences where it tries to pull out at the wrong time, but not at the perfectly wrong time. <laughs> Maybe you have to hit the accelerator a little to avoid it being uncomfortable. Those are really the only safety critical incidents I would have where it's not trying to kill you, but it wasn't the ideal time to turn. I've had two of those in however many months it's been since V13 came out. So uh, one question here, isn't it applied that the version you use in current RoboTaxis is V14? I don't think so. So I think it's like a V13 plus where they got rid of a couple issues, one especially around the behavior of the wipers and a downpour. So it forces the wipers to go fast, having the wipers go slow and then the car giving up. That's one thing they fixed with Austin, but it's not version 14. It's a really good ride. I did 62 rides in Austin on the RoboTaxi. First week it came out. So taking a step back, what does this actually imply for Tesla? If let's just take Elon's word for it, which granted Elon time and all that, but I would say in the past year or so, they're actually finally delivering on timelines in a way that has never been true historically around FSD. Elon is basically saying next month, end of September, roughly a month from right now, this goes out. I don't know. It it seems to me that FSD was this well-kept secret for a while with the way that it used to drive. It was understandable that take rates were so bad. I I wouldn't turn it on with my wife in the car because it would just make the driving experience more uncomfortable. So I was interested in it from a tech perspective and wanting to understand my investment in Tesla better. But the Mm -hmm. average consumer did not like the experience of FSD. I I think that is changing now. I think I shared this a couple of weeks ago. I, I gave my brother a ride. He didn't even realize the car was driving itself until halfway through a half hour drive. And he was just like blown away. He couldn't stop talking about it to like to everybody he met the next day. And so I think yeah. as we start to get butts on seats and all the stuff Tesla has been trying with giving 90 days free of, of FSD when you buy a new car or something like that, all these little promotions, given how good the software is now, I think are going to start to to bear some fruit. And I think they might actually result in vehicle sales from people who wouldn't have considered buying a Tesla previously. Tesla is the only car you can buy that's going to do this. I think it's a really big deal for take rate going up. I think it's a really big deal for vehicle sales actually getting a little bit of a buffer. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really big deal because we're starting to expand to new geographies. And we'll talk about that in a second too. But then lastly, and most importantly, it's a big deal because it is another very important milestone in paving the way for RoboTaxi to work out economically, meaning the safety monitor gets out of the vehicle if it's meaningfully safer than a human. Maybe they don't do it right away when V14 launches, but presumably if it's safer than a human next month, maybe two, three months after that, you can take the safety monitor out. So it just seems like it's a very big deal for a lot of different reasons. And I agree with you. A lot of people in the X community seem to be sleeping on this. Like, this is a yeah. very big deal and I'm pretty bold up about it, but that sentiment doesn't seem to be out there too much. Yeah, It's not perfect yet. Elon's late. It won't be for a while. Yeah. Um, and you're being hypey, Brad, just to get attention. So um, now there's, it's possible there's some kind of regression. So you might have mentioned that earlier. So one regression we had with version 13 is sometimes it anticipates a light changing from red to green. And it'll do that successfully. So it'll go like a second or two before it turns green. But we had a regression where... There's no cars at the intersection, the light is red, the Tesla stopped, and then it suddenly decides to go at a red light. So unsafe behavior and certainly a regression. So that could happen where you could have some obvious unsafe behavior and you get a regression with version 14. I'll give that to someone that maybe we see some kind of unexpected regressions. I think one regression they had during all the versions was like, and I think this was version 10.69 or 11 or whatever is 
they they train the car on more instances of changing lanes so it could be really good at changing lanes but the, all the car wanted to do was change lanes you remember that matt <laughs> yeah i do look how good i am dad i can change lanes <laughs> fine. stop changing yeah. lanes uh, i actually had that so like the training past... data like it might have some unexpected yeah. consequences that they're not anticipating so certainly that could happen yeah but it's does follow a, a string of different kernels that Elon has given us recently. He was talking about this next version having a 3x increase in parameters, and then it was a 4x like mm -hmm. a month later, and now all of a sudden it's a 10x. So I, I get the sense that they're seeing such significant improvements with the parameter increase that they're like, let's maximize that and get to the end state, which is safer than a human, faster. Mm -hmm. People might be frustrated that it's been so long while we're on V13 with all these like intermittent minor fixes updates that everyone's, ooh, software update. And it's always disappointing now because it's always minor updates. But I do think it's not like they haven't been working on anything. Clearly the focus was on Austin and, and rolling that out. But this parameter increase, I think is a really big deal. If you look at these open source language models, like a 8 billion parameter language model versus a 70 billion parameter language model, it's not just nine times better. The accuracy doesn't increase that much, but the usability and how good the answers are, it's night and day compared to the smaller model. I'm excited by it. I think Tesla has fixed a lot. We'll see if there's regressions. I'm optimistic they'll be able to take the safety monitor out. Now, maybe they won't at first in a new area just to see that everything goes fine. I'm also curious to see what they do with highways. So I think they want to avoid fatalities and fatalities are a lot higher on highways. I think they want to avoid fatalities. Yeah. Waymo, <laughs> Waymo uh, I don't know if they've had one or maybe it's been a while, but because they're generally not on highways, they really haven't had any. It's uh, funny. I've heard their CEO talk about that and they're like, we're doing the hardest thing first by doing city streets, <laughs> which are more complicated and nuanced. And I was like, mm -hmm. or you're just being super conservative and not wanting your vehicles to go over 50 miles an hour, which is a reasonable strategy to be honest, but they pitch it. It's just so funny seeing this debate play out in the public sphere where a lot of really smart investors like Jason Calacanis was talking about this, where like Waymo and Tesla FSD are basically neck and neck with performance. And they're like, we'll just see which one wins. And I'm like, yeah, all right. I think there really are so many people that just are not ready. They don't realize. And it's a lot of Tesla bulls, which yeah. su surprises me. That's why I'm losing my mind about it.